Raphael opened his mouth to respond, but was cut off by the man on the phone. Look, Raphael, I don't give a shit if portions of your network are under investigation. I want my money. I want my shit back. If you can't provide it, I'll find a way to get it myself. Raphael rolled his eyes. Listen here, Hammer. You don't get to dictate shit when it comes to my business. You'll get your stupid shit when I get it to you. Raphael furiously hung up the phone. He threw the phone against a nearby wall. Amelia, Amy, seemed surprised. Usually, Raphael was calm, collected. He would never speak to a client like that. Raphael noticed the way Ame was looking at him and he spoke. The military tension is causing a lot of chaos. My shipments were discovered during a routine military patrol in orbit of Perfectum. Now the entire sector is being investigated. They haven't traced anything to me yet, but they might end up shutting down my entire operation in the star system. Raphael let out a long breath and sat down, leaning on his back against the couch, his suit crumpling. Arme sat next to him on the luxury silk sofa. Raphael had his eyes closed, but he could feel the weight of the cushions shift as she sat down. Arme didn't say anything. Raphael somewhat appreciated this. He needed this time to think. After nearly five minutes of weighing his options, Raphael came with his solution. Okay, I have a solution. It's far from my ideal situation. But we have to do this. That fucker on the phone. Hamar? His business has been dealing in illegal arms in Perfectum for a decade now. We can throw the civil police off my ass for a little while so I can organize things into hiding again if we hint to them about Hamar's arms business. It might start a war with his organization, though, Raphael said, laying out the idea of his plan. He glanced toward Aimé to see her reaction. She was blank-faced, revealing nothing. This is both what made her a good and a bad partner. Sometimes... He felt like she was planning to take over his business or something. Raphael stood up and went over to the counter. There was nothing Raphael loved more than the dim lights of his penthouse with the neon lights of the city in the distance. Sakarius was far from the perfect city, definitely shadier than most, but it was still home. Raphael grabbed two glasses and some aged wine from the wine fridge. He poured the glasses and walked to Amy, handing her one. Holding his wine with his left hand, he stows his right hand in the pocket of his pantsuit and walks to the window of his penthouse, watching the city move on. The cars looked like moving lights in the city. Raphael watched Aim through the reflection of the window. Ame was still sitting on the couch, looking at the floor, drinking her wine. Why are you so quiet tonight? Raphael asked her. She looked at him. Raphael strained to hear, I just have a bad feeling about everything. I'm kind of worried. Raphael wondered whether or not to take Ame's intuition seriously. She was rarely worried about anything, at least from what he's seen. He directed his attention back to the city. It was beginning to get a bit awkward. Do you want to stay the night tonight? It's a bit late. I can sleep on the couch. There's a TV in my room that you can use too, Raphael said, looking at the reflection again. She looked at him, semi-flustered. No, Raphael, it's okay. I already called a taxi. A ding came from her phone. Well, speak of the devil. I'll see you, Raphael. Thank you. She put the wine glass on the counter as she opened the door and left his penthouse. Raphael sighed and walked to his counter, putting his wine glass on it. He locked his front door and went into his room to retire. After getting ready for bed and laying down, Raphael kept thinking of what Am said about what was happening. He still didn't know what it meant. Raphael woke up the next morning to a loud knock on his door. He panicked a little. He opened his nightstand drawer and grabbed his pistol. He swiftly got dressed. He arrived at the door and looked through the peephole. It was Makrov, his guard and friend. 
Raphael opened the door. Makrov was slightly sweating like he ran up here. Sir, we have to leave Sakarius for Homewood. The jet is prepped and everything. We have to go. Raphael was surprised, confused. Why? What's going on? Raphael demanded to know. Makrov wasted no time in answering. The city is being evacuated. The city is being invaded. Raphael was still confused, but because Makrov insisted, he began following. Makrov led them to the stairwell instead of the elevator. Odd. Why aren't we using the elevator? Raphael questioned. Broken. Apparently the cables snapped in the panic to leave the building. Makrov answered confidently. They began ascending the steps when Raphael stopped in his tracks. Ami! What about Ami? She's still in the city, isn't she? Raphael exclaimed. We have no way of knowing, sir. It's likely she already left, he said, continuing up the stairs. Raphael followed, pulling his phone out of his pocket. He looked at his phone to see multiple messages by Amy about how he should leave, and she was already in a flight out of Sicarius. He calmed down a bit. He wondered why, shaking the thoughts from his mind. They reached the door that leads to the roof. Makrov swiftly opened it, and a rush of wind flew his tie and hair around as he kept the door open for Raphael. As Raphael passed the door, he saw one of his private jets waiting for takeoff. There were two guards waiting outside it. Eh? As Raphael began taking steps toward it, he noticed a fast flying object in the distance. It was whirring, and it began making a horrid whirring noise. Raphael panicked, grabbed Makrov, and attempted to throw them both down the stairs. Raphael heard an explosion and felt a blast impact as he fell down the stairs with Makrov. Makrov inspected the roof and shook his head. They sat in the stairwell for a while. This is a really shitty morning, Makrov, Raphael told him. After around eight minutes of waiting around, the pair begin descending the stairs. The journey takes them about fifteen minutes, taking some breaks. Once they reach the first floor, they open the door to the lobby. It was deserted. Everything was on, the lights, televisions, computers, but no one was around. It was eerie. They made their way to the front door, where they began hearing screaming. The glass around the front of the building showed thousands on the other side, all running one direction, south. South was the main roadways to Homewood. Why Homewood? Raphael asked Makrov. Supposedly, Homewood is the only city yet to be attacked. I also heard the military is mobilizing en masse to defend the city, Makrov responded. What about the military here? Raphael interrogated. I'm sure they're fighting. Somewhere. They open the door and join the crowds of people fleeing. They continue southward like everyone else. After jogging for nearly an hour, the noises only grew more intense. Sounds of combat from the city center. Bombs. Gunfire. As time went on, the crowd also began to thin out. They're trying to avoid a large group. Good idea. Shouldn't we split from the main group? We're a target, Raphael asked Makrov. No! This is the quickest and direct way to Homewood. The crowds will keep thinning out until we're not a target anymore. At day ten minutes later, out of exhaustion, the pair agree to walk their way now. Raphael noticed that he saw dozens of aircraft converging on the city over the time they were walking. The freeway was full of stopped vehicles. No one was in any of them. It looked like an apocalypse movie. Raphael was living an apocalypse. Raphael and Makrov stuck to the sides of the freeway, hoping to avoid vehicles. As the hours went by, though, the cars began thinning out. What worried Raphael, however, was that the gunfire was sounding closer and the explosions were closer as well. As Raphael and Makrov stopped to take a rest, Makrov pointed out how the front looked like Sicarius was about to be lost. The outskirts of the city was now seeing major fighting. 
This was also supported by what looked like military convoys in the far distance attempting to reorganize defense lines around the city. After spending an hour resting, they continued along the road. They walked for five hours before calling it a day. There were still dozens with them, but everyone was continuing at their own pace. Raphael and Makrov slept as the night consumed the landscape around them. The gunfire and explosions throughout the night kept them on edge, but they managed to get a decent amount of sleep. However, by the time they woke up, the gunfighting and explosions sounded no further than fifty miles from them. It looked like Sicarius had just fallen. It was an insane concept to fathom. The city was the second largest on Restoff. It would be hell to attack the city, let alone occupy it. They hurriedly continued along the freeway, the vehicles blocking the freeway practically non-existent now. In the distance, they could see something. It was military vehicles with soldiers. A checkpoint? The two approached cautiously, but they were spotted. After some initial communication by the soldiers in the far distance, they seemed to stand down. Raphael and Makrov approached and were greeted by a group of soldiers. One approached them. Raphael guessed they were an NCO. The NCO held out their hand for a shake, and Raphael returned it. We were thinking there weren't going to be very many refugees. Looks like you two made it. Sorry the checkpoint is so far back here. We've had some logistics issues. Not to mention it looks like the front lines are rapidly approaching us. Let us get you out of here. The NCO motioned to a man in the checkpoint booth, who picked up a radio. Around ten minutes later, a truck arrived. As Raphael and Makrov looked to board it, the NCO called out, A firing team of my men, and the truck's detail will escort you and a few other survivors to Homewood. Stay safe. Once they picked up the other survivors, the truck began moving. The soldiers put a tarp over the back of the truck for shade and possibly protection from the sights everyone may see. For nearly an hour now, the truck had been driving. Makrov wasn't exactly sure where they were, but a couple in the truck had a map. They believed they were about halfway from Homewood. That was when they heard the aircraft. Raphael didn't know what it was until the truck stopped and the soldiers ordered we stay in the truck. They quickly left to check the holdup. That was when the gunfire started. Raphael ducked low and attempted to look out the back of the truck. In the distance, on another highway below, the truck was a convoy. None of the vehicles looked human. The humans were currently engaged in combat, even though they were clearly outmatched. Raphael soon heard why. Within three minutes of safe combat, with minimal casualties, a loud noise was heard around. It sounded like aircraft was approaching. Raphael once again slightly poked his head out of the truck. He witnessed three aircraft, human-looking, descend on the highways. They began opening fire and launching missiles at the convoy below, beginning to blow them to bits. Raphael swiftly stuck his head in as the soldiers came running back towards the truck and the driver sped up. The soldiers spoke nothing of what just occurred. They were silent, shaken. Raphael could see why. As the drive continued, Raphael fell asleep. In what felt like hours, Makrov woke Raphael up. We're here, sir. We made it. Makrov sounded relieved but showed little of it in his face. Makrov still looked like a menacing guy. Raphael felt he made a good choice in a bodyguard. As they left the truck, Raphael could hear the noises. There was an ungodly amount of vehicles moving, aircraft whirring, people yelling. It sounded like armies were mobilizing. And they were. As Raphael looked toward the towering objects, homeward called buildings, he realized that this city would determine the fate of his planet. The pair approached the gates, what were supposed to give them solitude. Raphael felt it only gave them time.